hello guys welcome to our channel there was a recent doubt which was asked by some students so i i want to clarify this doubt let us see the question copper and nickel both fcc dissolve in each other in all proportion at room temperature the solid state from a sample of copper nickel alloy of unknown composition a powder pattern is obtained using monochromatic radiation of wavelength 1.54 angstrom the spread out film showed that the first reflection that is s equal to 88.4 mm the distance between inlet and outlet points of the x-ray beam was 180 mm estimate the percentage of copper in the alloy assuming a linear variation of lattice parameter with composition okay guys so this is a problem of x-ray diffraction and here it is given you that the spread out film so in which case we use a film and that we spread out we use it in powder diffraction okay and for this we use device error camera okay so how the construction of device error camera looks like you see here you can see this is the incident beam and this is the sample and this sample contains lot of powders over there. so that means the probability of plane which is aligned towards this incident beam such that the reflection is going to happen or the diffraction is going to happen is very high so that's why the probability is very high that's why we use powder so once it is high so you can see this is the incident and this is your exit beam now suppose we get a certain theta value such that the two theta correspond to such that we get this lambda is equal to 2d sine theta means this equation is satisfied so there we get the reflection okay or the diffraction so there will be equal probability that all these reflection from where we can get will be available over here this picture i have taken from v rag one book so you can see over there also so you can see that once the reflection happens so you can see suppose this is the first cone which is showing you the reflection right so what happens that it covers the complete surface where the reflection will be visible right so once we cover the complete surface of this cone so if you put a strip which is of shape like this the green one which is of shape like this so one part of this cone will fall over here right you can see the green part here over here will fall over here so once it will fall over here so it will mark something so that will create a mark or that will give an indication right so for this cone so there will be total two mark which is over here right so once we open this suppose we open this strip then it would like look like this which is given in the below right so this is the incident point and this is the exit point okay clear so see the first mark and the second mark which is over here so this will correspond to this arc okay because this is a part of cone surface so it will be a, a circular one so that will create a mark like a arc okay so similarly this will be the second arc and third arc and so on right depending on the theta so this distance which is over here so this distance is measured in terms of s or that is called as a spread so this one corresponds to your first reflection so every reflection will have two lines right so here the first line and the second line so it will come to first so this will correspond to your second okay <coughs> so it will be something like this okay so here it is given in this question that the spread out film shows that the for the first reflection s equal to 88.4 so you can see this is your s so here let us mark as s over here which is of our interest right so s1 let it be so s1 here it is given is 88.4 okay 
and next thing what we have the distance between the inlet and outlet points of the x-ray beam was 180 mm right so see here guys what is the distance between inlet and outlets this is the inlet and this is the outlet so this distance is equal to pi r yes because this complete distance is your 2 pi r so this will be half of this circle so it will be pi r so this pi r is given over here 180 mm right so for this we have a formula that this s is equal to 4 r theta right so how it is because we know it is your 4 theta right 4 theta and this is your r this distance from here to uh, to the to this line will be what r value so r value will correspond to this radius of this film okay so this will be r into 4 theta which will give you the distance okay so this is your s equal to 4 r theta so guys next thing you put the things over here whatever we know it is 88.4 is equal to 4 into r so r will be 180 by pi into theta so from this if you calculate your theta then it will be i have done the calculation so it is 0 0.38 radian so this will be in radian okay so now i am converting this theta in degree this is equal to 0 0.38 into 180 by pi right so this is your 22.1 degree okay now we know this theta okay so next task will be to find the edge length of this alloy which is giving you this reflection so how will you find we'll use this equation lambda is equal to 2d sin theta so this implies lambda is equal to 2a by root over h square plus k square plus l square and it is your first reflection right and it is given that copper nickel form homogeneous solid solution that means the probability of finding copper and nickel is same okay so once it is same so you can see like suppose this is your crystal structure it can be copper nickel copper nickel right or it, it can also be nickel copper nickel copper that means there is equal probability of finding of it and since both have the same crystal -like structure so we will assume this alloy behaving as a single element unit cell so that's why here it will be fcc so this will correspond to h square plus k square plus l square for the first reflection we know it is 3 so here yes, sine theta theta is how much 22.1 so let us find this a value so a value will be lambda we know how much it is 1.54 so 1.54 into root over 3 by 2 into sine 22.1 so a will be here i have got 3.544 angstrom okay so a for this alloy is equal to 3.544 angstrom okay next information which we require but here in the question it is not given but you can see what it tells you that estimates the percentage of copper in the alloy assuming a linear variation of lattice parameter with composition means as we add the other element the solute the linear parameter that means the edge length increases so first we will have to find what is the edge length of pure copper and pure nickel so edge length of pure nickel is equal to 3.52 angstrom right you can see in the back side of this book virag one there it is given or you can see in the internet also at um, this edge length of copper it is 3.61 right so we can see that as we add this copper into this nickel so the edge length will start increasing because the edge length of copper is higher right so let us assume here it is nickel and here it is copper and this corresponds to 100 percentage of copper 
okay so this corresponds to 100 percentage of copper okay so here it is 3.52 that means 100 percentage of nickel or zero percentage of copper and this is 3.61 right so what is the difference between them difference is 3.61 minus 3.52 it is 0 0.09 so for this 0 0.09 we get this 100% that means if we increase the size by 0 0.09 so it will correspond to 100% of copper so what is the increase in this alloy which we are getting so here we have this 3.544 okay so this is the amount of increase which we have got right so let us calculate this increase so this increase uh, suppose let it be <coughs> L and this is your L naught okay so L which is increase is 3.544 minus 3.52 which is equal to 4 to 0 0.24 okay so the percentage in terms of percentage it will be 0 0.24 divided by 0 0.09 into 100 so this will give you the composition now if you guys find this composition then it will come around 0 0.24 divided by 0 0.09 into 100 okay sorry there is a mistake it will be 0 0.02 So I have got this 26.66 percentage. Okay, guys. So this is what I have got, right? And if you see the answer, it is close to that. So it depends on what value exactly you have taken, like for lattice parameter of nickel and copper. But the method is this, okay? So if it, it will be asked in the question in your gate, so they will give you the edge length of copper and nickel individually and from there you can easily calculate. Okay, so don't bother about uh, whether it is matching directly with the answer or not, but the concept is same, right? So thank you all. So hope this will help you for your gate preparation and please be connected with us.